Joining me now to talk more about this is Florida Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz. So, Congressman, first, your reaction to these temperatures. You're a longtime climate policy advocate. Do you feel that lawmakers in Washington are as concerned about this as they should be? Well, first, Ryan, thanks for having me. And the simple answer to that is no, they're not concerned. Uh, they'll blame it on, on some sort of cycle. They'll say, well, we had the Ice Age. They'll come up with all sorts of excuses. But listen, anybody who knows who lives in areas that are prone to flooding have seen flooding more so than ever before. It's now flooding in regular rainstorms. Like here in Florida, if you go to Fort Lauderdale or if you go to Miami, uh, it now floods just when it rains. You don't need a tropical storm anymore. It's part of the regular occurrence. And with these temperatures that are going on, you know, this is going to create all sorts of stronger storms as we're seeing or stronger hurricanes. And here's what I will tell you. I will tell you that from an emergency management standpoint, which is something that I'm very deeply worried about as we have additional climate change, as waters rise, we're going to have water in places that we're not used to. And as temperatures increase, we're going to have weather in places that we're not used to, which means that the infrastructure is not prepared to take severe weather. Uh, Washington is doing nothing from a proactive basis to deal with those things. Yes, uh, there's money to deal with, you know, reducing uh, climate change. But there's nothing that we're working on today from a proactive basis to help harden our infrastructure uh, and, and harden, our, harden our, our roads and our homes and deal with the coming changes that we're going to have to deal with. Yeah, and that leads right into my next question, because it seems as though for many years, uh, we have treated climate change as a kind of an existential threat that our, our children and grandchildren are going to have to deal with. Do we need to start thinking about climate as a current threat to life, something that's happening right now, not something that's only going to impact people in the future? Yeah, look, we've had these heat waves in the past, but we're now breaking all records, right? And so, yeah, this is something we have to deal with now. When we have either a dramatic cold or traumatic hot, right, these, these are things that require emergency management responses. Because obviously, like we saw in Texas a couple of years ago, they lost the grid uh, when the temperatures got so cold. And the same thing happens when the temperatures get so hot. You have rolling blackouts that have to happen. And so, you know, there's loss of life because people get caught outside. We've seen that. People get dehydrated. Uh, but... I'm talking about from a global standpoint, from an emergency management standpoint that has to prepare to respond to these sort of events. Um, you know, the idea that we're not doing anything proactive uh, to deal with this today, tomorrow, or in 10 years uh, is, is problematic. And coming from the state of Florida, which is very prone to hurricanes, is very prone to seeing hurricanes getting stronger, uh, whether that was Hurricane Dorian that didn't hit, which broke all records, or Hurricane Michael and Hurricane Ian, cat five storms, uh, you know, within five years of each other, uh, is very concerning. So you have a unique experience in this realm because you worked as the director uh, of the Florida, Divi Florida Division of Emergency Management. How do you think that states at, at heightened risk of these climate emergencies, like you're talking about, these hurricanes, these you know, very high and low temperatures, how should they be preparing right now for the possibility uh, of serious issues related to climate? Well, I hate, to, I hate to give an answer that some people aren't going to like, but they got to invest money. I mean, that's really what's got to happen here. They got to invest money into emergency management. They got to invest money uh, into DOT to deal with the infrastructure. You know, they got to invest money into, you know, the water utilities. I mean, it's going to require us investing money into our grid. I mean, there's it, it requires investment. And the idea is because we know it's coming and we can be proactive. We can amortize that cost over a period of time rather than always being reactive. But unfortunately, we in this country and Washington, D.C. especially, is much better dealing with disaster as it comes live rather than planning for uh, the inevitable. And that's what is concerning here is that we know this is coming. We know we're going to be dealing with more water. We know we're going to be dealing with more serious weather. And we can be investing now so that we can bring that cost shock down. But we're not doing anything in Washington from a proactive basis. It's so interesting that you, you raise that point because couldn't you make an argument that there's a way to sell investment in climate change to the American people? I mean, we've seen situations now where NOAA has tracked nine what they call billion dollar disasters, meaning that the cost uh, of these huge storms comes after the fact. And in California and in your state of Florida, uh, there are some major insurers that say that they're not even going to sell new homeowners policies anymore. 
anymore because it's just not worth their investment. Is there an argument to be made that it's better to spend the money now than spend triple, maybe quadruple the amount after? Yeah, when the algorithms are starting to tell insurance companies that a state is no longer a good investment, that should be a wake-up call. <laughs> when the computers are saying, we're not going to insure your home, uh, you know, and they're telling us that, that, you know, there's a problem, that should be a good wake-up call. No, of course. It, listen, it, FEMA has shown that when they invest money, they spend money proactively in mitigation, it saves something like 3 or $4 for every dollar that they invest. And so, yes, we would save money for sure on the back end if we invested uh, invested on the front end. But look, we're gonna have to change certain things. We're gonna have to elevate roads. We're gonna have to talk about elevating homes, right? We're gonna talk about seawalls. We're gonna talk about these projects that are very, very expensive. And look, there's infrastructure dollars that are out there right now. Uh, there's inflation reduction uh, dollars out there that's gonna help deal with climate change. And these are all great policies that the Biden administration uh, helped pass. But the problem is so big uh, that it's going to take more than just those two pieces of legislation to help get us there. We just have a little bit time of time left here, Congressman, but I have to ask you, do your constituents equate these natural disasters, these extreme temperatures, specifically with climate change? Are you starting to notice them making that connection, or is it still two different conversations? So I'll tell you, the answer is yes, and the reason it's happening in Florida is the water. Water is now in places that it never used to be. So like I said, it could be a regular Thursday and you can get an afternoon rainstorm and, and people who have lived in a community for 10 or 15 years are seeing a street flooded that never used to flood before. And they're understanding that's because the water table is elevated, right? That's because the tide is higher. And so, yeah, people are starting to equate that here in Florida uh, with, with seeing water in certain places. I mean, obviously, you know, we've seen Hurricane Michael and Hurricane Ian, two Cat 5 storms in a five-year period. It's why the algorithms are blinking red saying, you know, Florida, Florida is a problem. And so, look, this is not just a Florida problem. This is a Texas problem. This is a Mississippi problem, a Louisiana problem, it's an Alabama problem. You go out to the, the West Coast, okay, where there's water issues with the Colorado River. This, this is a problem for the entire country. Uh, and, you know, if we don't start to become proactive, problem will become so big and so expensive that people are just going to say, well, we can't fix it. It's not fixable because we let it get to a point that it's not fixable. Right. And right now we can be doing a lot to be way more proactive and invest the money, especially into emergency management that will help mitigate these effects on communities. Okay. Congressman Jared Moskowitz, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thanks, Ryan. And coming up, 500 days of